Hello, Jay. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, I know you are from calling me from, from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And uh, thank you very much for the time you are giving us. And uh, okay. Mark, I can see the big statue from my window. Uh oh. I mean, I, I, <laughs> really in the heart of Rio. Okay. So um, we have a few questions that we prepare for you. And uh, I will uh, have told already to people who you are, so don't need to, to present yourself. And uh, so th those questions are about informal learning. So uh, first question would be uh, very simple. How do you define simply what is informal learning, in fact? OK. <laughs> well, the, the absolute defining characteristic is informal learning doesn't have a curriculum. Now, the curriculum is when somebody else figures out what you're supposed to learn mm -hmm. and sort of imposes it on you. That's, that's what training was about here. Take it. Whereas informal learning is more discovery. And if I need to be able to do something, I go find out how to do it. Informal learning is quite important. It's how we learn to talk, to walk, to be in society, to kiss a girl. <laughs> I mean, you didn't, you didn't go to school for these things. And actually, all learning is part formal, where there is, you know, some structure. I mean, we're, we have a common language, a common way of thinking about things. We learn socially from other people. So there's some structure. And it, it's always part informal because even in a formal learning situation, I mean, when I was going to Harvard, I didn't learn most of the stuff in class. I learned it from talking to people after class. So that was the informal component. So all learning's a mix of formal and informal. The formal is when there's not an external control on what, what it's about, what the content's about. OK. Well, thank, thank you for that, um, that first question. Uh, in, in the continuation of that first question, um, tell us why do you think it's so important to develop for a company like BNP Paribas uh, informal learning among uh, uh, people hired by within working within BNP Paribas. So why is it so important, according to you? Well, there were a number of studies done in the 60s and 70s, one in the 80s, to look at how do people really learn their jobs. And the, the first one was at an insurance company, and they looked at clerks who process claims. And they found that 80% of their knowledge didn't come from formal learning from classic. No, it came from talking with other people, from making a mistake and saying, I'm not going to do that again. You know, the experiential learning. People learn in these ways, and it, it's so much more important than what happens in the classroom. So if, if people don't pay attention to informal learning, the most important aspects of learning are left to chance, which is crazy. We can't afford to do that. Now, I they popularized the thing that, you know, about, and this is about, well, it depends on the content, the situation, everything else, but about 80% of the way people learn their jobs is informal. Mm -hmm. This is before we had the internet, before collaboration was easy, before I could reach out and find an expert, before I could be bathed in all of this information flow of what's going on. When I talk with my friends at Internet Time Alliance or in conferences these days, you think probably the formal part is shrunk at like 5% or less. Mm -hmm. There's another paradigm called 70-20-10, which says that 70% of work learning is experiential. Yeah. And 20% is directly working with other people. So I'm being coached or mentored or I'm partnering with somebody to learn something. And 10% is formal. Mm -hmm. Well, this too came before we had social learning via the internet. So I, I, I think probably we're into the sort of 80, 15, 5. I mean, the formal learning is so inconsequential that I think courses are dead and classroom learning for most things is a waste of time and money. And, and so, what about the e-learning? I mean, you have been at, uh, almost at the origin of e-learning. 
what do you consider e-learning would be in the future? Well, I think e-learning went off the track. Uh, and that there is an assumption that people are going to be able to learn just by being exposed to content. That's, that's faulty. That's wrong. And it's even more wrong now when the world is changing so fast every day that you've got to keep up, mm -hmm. not sort of memorize, you know, the, the basic foundation stuff. Everything's shifting. I mean, the nature of work is changing. Or it's more improvisational. It's problem solving. It's confronting things that aren't in the rule books. Mm -hmm. And doing so often without a manager, being you know, taking responsibility for your own learning how to figure out how to do things. So, if anything, the social and informal part, and those two overlap so much that I speak of them as the same thing. Yeah, uh, they're becoming absolutely vital. I think these days, when the world is changing so much, if you wake up in the morning and have shock headlines in the paper every day that work and learning are the same thing. Exactly. And that there's, mm. there's no reason to try to differentiate them. Sure. If you want people to work well, well, they better be learning all the time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's, it's vital. Okay. Well, thank you. And um, I have a last question. Uh, what, what advice would you give to the 90 people within the room uh, to develop informal learning? Well, the big picture is that it's infused throughout the entire infrastructure of the organization. So it, it's not a formula. It's not a training department thing. It, it's something where you've got to work with the, the structure that the organization's got to foster learning, to foster serendipity, not to punish people for making mistakes, but to encourage experimentation. Mm -hmm. I used to believe that there was great opportunity because it, it's cheap to experiment these days with starting things at the bottom and just see which ones bloomed and you know fertilize those plants and forget about the rest. And that works some places. I've seen some organizations develop from the ground up just with volunteers, beautiful informal learning situation. But I spent six months this year working with a large healthcare company. 30,000 employees that wanted to adopt a, a culture of collaboration. Mm -hmm. And they were doing it starting with the corporate university, which is going to revamp all of the things that people learn from, and a whole lot of stuff, by putting informal elements into it. Well, frankly, while they're working on that, I'm dissatisfied. It's not fast enough. Mm -hmm. It will not keep them competitive. I uh, have run into several cases lately where a senior and chief executive has adopted microblock, you know, Twitter type stuff, actually, Yammer most of the time. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they've got on, everybody else in the organization wants to get on. And there's this vibrant spirit where everybody's reading the same messages and glued in. They understand what the boss thinks. The boss understands what the people in the organization think. Sometimes customers are welcomed into these networks. It's magic. All of a sudden, you've got effective social networks. And, well, you know, at the Internet Time Alliance, Jane Hart, for five years now, has been asking people, what's the most effective learning technology mm -hmm. for you? And for a while, the first time around, it was sort of learning tool type things. And then all of a sudden, the browser mm -hmm. became the learning tool. Well, now Twitter yep. is the learning tool, or Twitter and microblogs. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the five members of the Internet Time Alliance, all of us say we learn more With Twitter. from Twitter yep. than from any other source. It's not that we learn from you know sentence fragments. It's that I see, oh, so and so said, look at this. So and so said, look at that. Mm -hmm. And once a week, Top e-learning professionals, or not, well, learning professionals, I should say, in America, get together, and we have a tweet chat where it's just this fast-flowing, I mean, you can hardly keep up with it, conversation among 60 people, who are thought leaders, about different topics, and it, that's spread to Europe. So now my friend Jane Hart is running a, a session like that once a week in Europe, and 
it, it's marvelous. It's a way to have communities of practice become real. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I, let, no, I'm going to mention one thing that I saw happen. Okay. Uh, I've, I've got a, a video. I'll send you the URL for the video. Okay. A friend of mine is working with this big manufacturing, well, distribution company, let's say. And they had Yammer in house just for swapping messages. And there were like 25 people who were on. And then the president of the company was watching the Oprah Winfrey show and saw Ashton Kutcher say that he wanted to get a million followers on Twitter. Mm -hmm. said, Twitter? What, what, what's Twitter? Maybe we should look at this. So he, you know, he wrote his communications guy. He said, well, I, I want to do something. Well, actually, we've got something in-house that we could use. You know, and it's free. Maybe you want to try that first. Well, within two weeks, there were 2,000 employees mm -hmm. actively participating because you know, I, the boss is there. We can read his stuff. We can you know, sure. say what we want to say. Two weeks later, there are 4,000 people on. Now, this, this is a, that's a significant chunk of, chunk of this company. Mm -hmm. So top-down does work. Leading by example does work. And I, I, frankly, I, I think our role as learning professionals, is to let top managers understand their influence and their power and to have meaningful things rather than what did I have for breakfast things, enter that stream. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's, it's just a, a great mm -hmm. opportunity and where I'd start if I was redoing things for the company stays. Well, Jet, th thanks a lot. Maybe your last thing? Um, do you have yourself a question to ask to, to people from Ben Pepareba and especially the training manager? <laughs> well, of course, my curiosity about what, what's going to happen with the Euro. <laughs> 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 I guess I'd have to go as Angela Merkel to get an answer to that one. Uh, <laughs> not, not really. I mean, I, I, always, I always love to have an opportunity to, to revisit La France since, you know, I spent okay. a couple of years in high school. Uh, my formative years were on a cyclo motor, and <laughs> okay. it's still always good to, to return. Well, th thank you, Jay. Merci beaucoup. Okay, de rien. And Au revoir. See you soon in Paris. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.